Hi, Tara Raphael here to help you review female anatomy. This review is meant to give you a basis for making the changes that will bring a long-term relaxing of your menstrual cramps. Our genitals developed to work as female anatomy or male anatomy from an undifferentiated base. Did you realize that we all started out neuter? This change into a boy or girl happens in the first weeks of our development inside of our mothers. Here you can see the male on the left and the female on the right. Similar tissues are matching colors. The internal genitals also differentiate at this time from a common beginning shown at the top. Even when still inside of our own mother, the eggs that can become our children are already there. And the egg that grew into us was first formed inside of our maternal grandmother. Amazing to contemplate it, isn't it? This shows the internal organs of a female newborn. The uterus is much smaller with less development until the hormones of puberty cause it to grow. During the fertile years, it is about the size of a woman's fist. After menopause, the uterus shrinks down again to a smaller size since it's not functioning for reproduction. This picture shows the adult woman. The uterus has developed and begins to cycle. You can see the proportional size to the rest of her body. Another way the uterus changes in size is during the menstrual cycle. The uterus weighs different amounts at different parts of the cycle. In ovulation, at ovulation it weighs 3 to 4 ounces. Just before the period, it weighs 6 to 8 ounces. The feeling you might have of heaviness right before your period is partly due to this doubling of the uterine weight. This picture shows the uterus and ovaries removed from the body and stretched out on a table. Your organs aren't arranged like this, although it is a common way to illustrate the female internal genitals. Here you can plainly see the broad ligament, or trampoline as I call it, which is shown as a tannish color. In this illustration, you can see inside of the uterus, the inner lining which thickens each month and then becomes, comes out as menses is called the endometrium. The muscular layer is called the myometrium. The bottom third of the uterus is the cervix, the gateway into and out of the uterus. It extends into the vagina. The uterine muscles tighten in three different directions, especially useful in childbirth. The circular muscles going around the uterus can hold things in. The longitudinal muscles can push things out as well as open up the cervix, and the diagonal muscles help to prevent hemorrhage in childbirth by clamping off the blood vessels that were opened up underneath the placenta. The uterine muscles are the same muscles that contract to squeeze out your period each month and can cause painful cramping if not nurtured properly. This view is a more lifelike positioning of the female organs. The body is split upright all the way down the midline. So you're looking from the side. The white oval is the bone, the pubic bone in the front. And the bladder is a triangular looking organ just inside of it. Above the bladder is the uterus suspended by the broad ligament. The end of the uterus, the cervix, is extending into the vaginal canal. The ovary is above and behind the uterus as well as to the side a bit. Behind the uterus is the rectum. I want you to notice these relationships between the organs because they will help you know by your symptoms if your uterus is out of place. This gives another view from above looking down into the pelvis. Here you can see more clearly how the broad ligament, that trampoline, supports the uterus. Here both ovaries are in a natural position that you can see how the fallopian tubes hug around the ovaries. Note the blood vessels going to the ovaries. The colon or rectum is below in this picture. This picture helps us understand how a uterus and ovaries out of their natural place could cut off the blood flow, making for an unhealthy reproductive system. This shows us how the lymph, those little brownish nodules interlacing with the blood system, are arranged. Lymph keeps our system clear of toxins and infection, and if that system gets blocked, as in an out-of-place uterus, health can be blocked. The nervous system sends messages to our female organs and also registers pain sensations from them. 
both important in relaxing menstrual cramps. This is one reason why spinal and sacral problems can be related to problems with menstruation, fertility, pregnancy, and menopause. Now that you've had a brief tour of the female anatomy, watch my next video, Know Yourself to Relax Menstrual Cramps Part 2, Female Cycles. We're laying the foundation for you to know how to take care of your body to relax menstrual cramps without using drugs. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and you can go to my website at www.wisewomanhood.com.